So the core, the sun fuses hydrogen to helium. Perfectly fine. Proton, proton chain, we already talked about this before. Hydrogen fuse into deuterium, uh, which fuses when the hydrogen makes helium-3. Helium-3 is fused, helium-4, proton, proton. There's other proton, proton chains. There's the CNO cycle. That's all fusing hydrogen. Eventually, you run out of hydrogen to fuse. You get the core that's a dead core okay uh swells up to be a subgiant then you start fusing in this shell surrounding the core when you fuse in the shell surrounding the core then what happens is it causes the outer part of the sun to really expand big Okay, and when it does that, when you really expand huge like that, it swells up to be a red giant. In the core that's still dead, you've shrunk the core down to the point that it is now a degenerate electron system. You've shrunk it as much as you can shrink it. Okay, and so now the question is, you're fusing hydrogen in the shell, what's going to happen next? Okay. Well, an interesting thing happens. Okay. Eventually, that core, if you keep fusing hydrogen into helium in the shell, you start squeezing that core. Okay. It's not that it's, you know, you know that, 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 that extra helium in that shell is actually adding mass to the core. This degenerate system does not behave normal. You add extra mass to it, it shrinks. That means it has extra gravitational energy that allows it to shrink. So it actually gets smaller. When the core shrinks enough, now another interesting thing happens. When, it, if, if it is above 100 million Kelvin, and it is under enough pressure, then two of the two of the heliums can actually fuse and make a beryllium eight. Remember, beryllium eight will actually fall apart into two heliums, you know, because that's energetically feasible. If you have all this extra energy available from the heat and the pressure, you can actually squeeze it back. And then, if you squeeze quickly another uh, helium in there. You can make carbon-12. This is the most common isotope of carbon. So you can actually make carbon. Okay. Now, if you throw another, another helium in there, you can make the carbon into an oxygen-16. Uh, but that that's, is an ex, extra step. But what happens is that you can actually start doing this. Now, stars that are really huge gradually before the core gets totally dead okay can actually start this process so if you have a star that is you know like you know uh, 15 or 10 or 15 solar masses it, it, you actually don't go through this red giant stage because the core gradually will start fusing into this next step okay uh, um, um, as it's starting to become a red giant. You don't actually get the degenerate core. Uh, for stars that are less than 0.4 solar masses, they never get hot enough to do this. So they will just gradually go into that red giant stage and not go beyond that. But the sun is going to actually start this process right here. Now, the problem is that we now have a degenerate core. The degenerate core can't just start fusing helium into carbon, okay, because it's not an ideal gas. Instead, when it fuses, it releases energy. That release energy makes it hotter. And when it gets hotter, it shrinks a little bit and makes the fusion go even faster, which releases more energy, which makes it even hotter, which makes it shrink and fuse even faster. And so you run, get this runaway process. This is like an all-out bomb going off in the center of the sun. We call that the helium flash. Now, again, 
stars that are big enough do this more gently. So stars that are like 10 solar masses, uh, they just gradually start fusing into this process. Stars that are about two and a half solar masses also don't have a helium flash because the core actually is, because there's so much gravitational energy to begin with, they're so hot to begin with, the core doesn't really become degenerate. Uh, so it, it becomes a dead core, but it's not a degenerate dead core, and so it just starts the process of fusing. Okay, for the sun, it fuses like crazy, and eventually, when it fuses like crazy like this, then all this energy actually is enough energy to push things away from one another, and it quits be beginning, be quits being a helium degenerate, but quits being a hydrogen degenerate system. Okay, and so when it does that, it temporarily becomes a normal ideal gas and the core expands. Okay, and so this blast of energy works its way out and the sun brighten, will brighten up, okay, and then quickly drop back down as things settle down. And so this is a helium flash and uh, um, at that point, you're starting to fuse in the core like you're supposed to. Okay, the helium flash happens up here. So if you imagine a whole bunch of stars on the HR diagram, they evolve off of the HR diagram, they evolve off the main sequence, and they go up here. We call this the red giant branch, okay, and the helium flash happens. Okay, when the helium flash happens, for the sun, it's probably going to happen and disrupt the core. And then it's going to reform a degenerate system, do another helium flash, reform the core, do another helium flash, reform the core. And eventually, after several helium flashes, then it stabilizes. And then now you're fusing helium into carbon in the core. And when that happens, this, this is a much hotter process. And so the sun will actually change and start heading back to the main sequence, but it's going to start heading back to the upper part of the main sequence. So uh, if you had a star cluster, that star cluster would have a bunch of stars that left that, that left the main sequence over here, evolved off the main sequence, heading back to the main sequence, and so the HR diagram would, would have stars here, 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 here that have not yet died, stars that are dying, stars that are already past that step, and so you get this big zigzag in the HR diagram, and so the horizontal part they call the horizontal branch. Okay, so it would look something kind of like that. So the sun's going to settle down, it's going to shrink, it's going to be hotter, but it's going to be a little bit dimmer than it was at the red giant, but much hotter, so it's going to be on that horizontal branch. Okay, so the death of the sun. Right now, the sun is behaving like it's supposed to. It's fusing hydrogen into helium in the core. Eventually, it's going to die. It's going to swell out to be a red giant when the core dies. Then it's going to start fusing in a shell around the core. Then it's going to become a red giant star. So it became a subgiant first, then a red giant. The core is dead. There's no fusion going on in the core. Okay. It's mostly a helium-rich core. And you start fusing in the shell surrounding the core. The outer part of the sun really expands outwards. You get a red giant star. And then after the helium flash, then you start fusing helium in the core. That's where you're supposed to be fusing. Okay, so now the, core, the sun shrinks like it's going back to being a main sequence star, except in order to fuse helium, it has to be a vastly hotter core. So hot that it keeps fusing in a region near the core, it fuses hydrogen into helium. And so, uh, so, you're, so it's still going to be a little bit bigger than it would normally be if it were a regular main sequence star.